So hi, hi and welcome everyone, welcome back. The last part that we want to talk about here is channelization protocols, including FDMA, TDMA, CDMA, OFDMA, NOMA, and the Space Division Multiple Access, SDMA. We want to understand the meaning of each one of them and how they work and see some visualization as well. So let's start with uh, TDMA over here. You see with me this figure over here. We have TDM in part A, FDM, CDM. Now before we talk about them, let's just remind you of the resources we have available in computer networks, wireless network, mobile network. These resources are like uh, the soul of our communication networks. Without them, we wouldn't we wouldn't be able to communicate. Uh, so, what are the main resources we have? We have frequency. This is resource number one. We have time. Resource number two. We have power. Resource number three. We have orthogonal codes. Resource number four. What else we have? We have space. The, the coverage area that I was talking about in the previous lecture. Space, uh, uh, this is controlled by the antenna. If you want your coverage to be in all the directions or in one direction, this is also helpful in allowing multiple users to access your resources, to, to talk to multiple users and multiple users talk to you. So based on these re available resources, we, have, we can end up having multiple accessing techniques. The first technique is TDMA. So if you look at part A over here, you have time division multiple access. As the name implies, you are dividing time and allocating it to different users. In this case, I want you to remember the following. The frequency is the same for, for all the users. All the users, they have the, the same frequency, but you are avoiding collision between them, avoiding interference by dividing them into separate time slots. And each user is allowed to be talking within a certain duration. That's not interleaving or interfering or overlapping with any other time slot users. So this is TDMA, very simple, very straightforward. You have the same power, same frequency, same all the other resources, the only thing that you divide and share between users is the time you divide it. Each user is allowed to talk within certain time. And that's why we call it time division multiple access. Multiple access based on dividing the time. No collision. And awesome, better than CSMA, better like usually if you have enough time, of course. But usually the limitation of this is that uh, after you multiply certain number of users, you will start experiencing too much delay because what you do basically is this. You give the first user the first time slot, then the second user the second, the third, the fourth. But if you want uninterrupted services to be experienced by your receiver, you have to minimize this delay. After you serve certain number of users, you, you are going to stuck in the quality experience of the service you are providing for your user because there is always certain limit on the maximum delay your receiver can to tolerate. And therefore, time division multiple access is good when you have, when you have uh, fast switching and you have lower number of users. But when you have so many users and when you have a slower switching process, time division multiple access is not going to serve you. It's not going to uh, be an optimal multiple access technique for you. Where is it used? It's used in telephony networks. It's used in 2G networks. It's used in most of the network, but usually they don't depend on it solely. They, they have it combined with other multiple access techniques so that they can serve more users. This is TDMA. What about FDMA? FDMA, you have the following. All the users, they share the same time, they share the power, they share... The only thing that divides the users from each other and make sure they don't interfere with each other is frequency. So each user talk at a certain frequency. And because of this, the users will not collide with each other. You will not experience collision. You, you won't experience 
interference and your packet your packets and the frames will be received successfully this is fdma what's the limitation on fdma why you cannot always use fdma because frequency is the most precious and expensive resource we might you see in computer networks or wireless networks frequency usually is licensed bought from governments bought by companies from governments for million or billion of dollars so that they can get access to the spectrum so since it's more expensive than gold and it's the most precious resource you have you don't usually companies and people don't have a plenty amount of spectrum even you you yourself if you want to transmit over this spectrum without getting a license from the government you will get fined you will be fined and they may uh, procrastinate uh, they may question you and uh, call you for the court uh, FDMA transmitting good frequency is not an easy process. You need to get proper licenses. You need to buy them maybe if you don't get the permission from the government. And those are very expensive. Of only operators like uh, the, the, the companies that they provide mobile cellular telephony to you can afford buying them. Very expensive. Just recently, some countries like USA and UK started making some spectrum available like very very good spectrum i'm not talking about the spectrum of wi-fi that cannot reach more than 100 meter i'm talking about a, spe a frequency spectrum that can allow you to transmit for hundreds of kilometers that's the spectrum that we are looking for we we call the frequencies that give you this opportunity give you this property of transmitting for long ranges we call the spectrum the golden spectrum the golden frequencies so this is FDMA basically. I told you the advantages and the limitations and TDMA, the advantages and the limitations. What about CDMA? CDMA is the technology used in 3G networks uh, and it depends on multiplexing codes. Uh, basically all the users share the same frequency, the same time. Imagine this multiple access technique. All frequency, all time. So you think there is absolutely 100% collision gonna happen between them. But it's the opposite. No collision. How do you do that? Smartly. By designing codes, intelligent codes that make these codes for the people who know very they know math very well. If you design two codes, two sequences to be orthogonal on each uh, orthogonal on top of each other, then what's the contribution? What's the projection of each sequence on the other? What do you think? What's the con if two codes are orthogonal? To each other what's their dot product which is the contribution of one of them on the other or the projection of one of one of them on the other what do you think the result would be the result is zero the contribution which means the interference the collision the effect of one of these codes on the other is zero if you can smartly come up with codes that are orthogonal to each other then you can assign them to different users and all the users can share the same time, the same frequency, but still decorrelate from each other and not interfere with each other at all. So this is awesome technique. This is amazing. It increases the number of users we can serve with better quality because now the user has all the time, has all the frequency. So what's the limitation of this? Why don't we start with it? Why don't we just use it? The reason, the, the reason why we can't uh, all, all the time depend on it is because we are limited on the number of available orthogonal codes. You reach to a certain limit where you cannot come up with any more orthogonal codes, and uh, there will be there, you, you end up having synchronization problem, uh, variable link, and there are many problems related to limitation on having infinity number of codes. Therefore, you you cannot be you, it, it works well for certain number of users, but if you have too many users to serve, you will run out of codes, and uh, you will you will find out that CDMA is not efficient anymore. So, what's the solution, people? And it has also problems with equalization because it works in time domain. So people, as you can see, people moved from FDMA, which is first generation mobile network, to TDMA, second generation, uh, and CDMA in third generation. As you can see, in CDMA, you multiplex the codes, the codes in the power domain, and time and frequency share. In 1G, time is 
not uh, time is shared, but frequency is divided. In 2G, frequency is the same, but uh, time is divided. Here, frequency is divided, sorry. And in OFDM, which is the technology, the multi-axis technology used in 4G and 5G even, it's called orthogonal frequency division multiple axis. What's this? Basically, you combine FDMA with TDMA and you put them in one grid. Not only this, but not, not a normal combination, but also you, you exploit the feature of having overlapped carriers. The carriers that carry your signal. You overlap them with each other. You squeeze them to each other. You make them close to each other so that you carry as much data as you can without causing interference by exploiting a feature called orthogonality in OFDM. And it has many features. It has been a very successful technology in 4G. It has been a very successful technology in 5G. It's used in Wi-Fi network as well. Some Wi-Fi networks to coordinate the interference and make sure all the users get reliable data. So you can think also of new, new multiple access technologies, you can think of what if we combine, we, what if we split the time, split the frequency, split the code, split the bar, and put all of them together. Then you will end up have a, a, a box like this, a, cub, a cubic like this. And uh, each, each, each cube here represents a user data. And this user data, this cube is basically a combination of time, frequency, power, and code, and, and carrying data to be served to a certain user. So these are the main accessing technologies. In addition to that, I told you we have a space division multiple access. What's the space division multiple access? Space division multiple access means you multiplex users and serve them by multiplexing beams and dividing beams which are the radiating patterns generated from your antenna. So each user will be served by one beam, one radiation pattern. And you can multiplex and separate these beams from the other beams that are serving other users because the beams are extremely narrow and pointed exactly towards the direction of the intended, intended receiver. So all of these together uh, are very good accessing technologies. So space division multiple access is also a technology that's helpful in many scenarios. And the latest one, which is not being currently used in any uh, practical network, is NOMA, non-orthogonal multiple access. In non-orthogonal multiple access, basically, you combine, you think of it like scenario D, D here. You, you see D? This picture D, you have user 1, user 2, user 3, user 4. So in normal scheme, all the users share the same time, the same frequency, but you multiplex them in power domain, in power, in power domain. So what will happen here in power domain? So if you multiplex them in power domain, but without using code, what will happen? So in CDMA, you multiplex them in power domain using codes, and you are able to resolve because each pair of users communicating with each other, they have their own pairs, and because of this, they can decode and decode successfully. But what about this case? You don't have codes. How are you, how are you gonna separate the user's data from each other and make sure that each user gets all his own data correctly, successfully, without any interference uh, from the other users? So the way we, they do this is each receiver has a detection mechanism called successive interference cancellation, where the user, before it detects its own data, it detects the data of all the other users and then subtract this data from the whole received data and so that he can get his own data. Of course, this has its own disadvantages as well. What's the first, uh, what's the, key advantage here. The key advantage here is you serve more users than the available resources you have. You have certain number of slots and time, certain number of frequencies, but if more users want to access your network than the available resources you have, what would you do? You will not be able to serve them if you stick with TDM or FDM or CDM. To solve this problem and to serve them, you have, the only way for you is to multiplex them in power domain. If you multiplex them in power domain, this is direct interference. 
because the signals are overlapping, touching each other on top of each other. So if this is the case at the transmitter side and when you transmit your packet, what has the receiver, what would the receiver do so that uh, the, the interference can be removed? The receiver has to use detection mechanism, very sophisticated and complex detection mechanisms that help isolate the interference from the pure net data that the user is interested in getting. So this is NOMA. We talked about space type uh, division multiple axis and uh, OFDM, CDM, PDM, FDM. So these are the techniques. Why are these techniques are preferable to be used in mobile wireless networks? Because they guarantee performance, they guarantee quality of service. If you get assigned uh, a certain resource, this resource is going to be reserved for you until you finish. There is no contention, no uh, possible collision, no interference in most cases, unless you are getting this interference from other adjacent base stations. So this is all about channelization or what we call scheduling. Uh, TDMA, FDMA, CDMA, OFDMA, Space Division Multiple Access, which is SDMA and NOMA, Non-Orthogonal Multiple Access. So with this, we conclude our lecture. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for attending the lecture, and I hope it was useful and helpful, and it will ignite you and motivate you to think of techniques and methods that can even perform much better than the existing ones that I just explained to you in this course. Take care, stay blessed, and see you in the next lecture.